Welcome, everyone, to Ash Wednesday service at Woodlands Church. Um, this is a little bit of a different service because uh, I was expecting a lot of people to be here. Um, but, of course, uh, we canceled that because of the winter storm. And But we felt like it was important for our worship team. Way to go, guys, for being here. And uh, for me to be here to bring you an Ash Wednesday service because we need this encouragement on Ash Wednesday. I know so many of you uh, who are connecting with us right now have been going through a whole lot over the last several days during this winter storm and just know we're praying for you. And we wanna hear from you if you have any needs that the church can meet because we're just now mobilizing our disaster relief teams. We feel like there's gonna be a lot of uh, cleanup, a lot of um, you know, almost like the flood in some ways because of that we had in Hurricane Harvey because of the um, damage that's going to be done because of pipes breaking and all the things that are going on across the city. But we're here for you, and God is working in the midst of it. 
and we're praying for you. And I've heard from so many life groups that have been just reaching out, going throughout their neighborhood, asking people what they need. Some of them have even been repairing pipes and it's just amazing to see. And that's what the church is all about. Um, I really encourage you to keep checking on your neighbors and friends and relatives all during this time. One huge thing you can do for us, we were contacted this morning by our partner at the Gulf Coast Regional Blood Center, and they have lost thousands of units of blood due to power issues. Even their backup power failed, and so um, they can't use that blood that they had stored, and so we want to offer assistance. We're going to hold an emergency blood drive at our Woodlands and Atascacita campuses on Friday and Saturday from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. at the Woodlands campus and the Atascacita campus and that's gonna be on Saturday. So keep an eye on the website and social media platforms for more details. But um, as we're mobilizing our disaster relief teams to do disaster relief right in our own areas here, many times we're going all over the country, all over the world, but um, there's gonna be a lot, of, uh, a lot of chances to really reach out to people and bring disaster relief. I, I wanna start by just praying because um, there have been people who've lost their lives. There have been people who are really hurting, families hurting, and homes that have been flooded, all these things that have been happening. Some people still don't have their power, and I think it's so important for us to pray for those who are hurting in our church family and for those hurting all over the Houston area to pray for them, for God's strength and protection and healing. Um, in fact, um, we just heard that uh, one of our former pastors, David Pham, who was one of our children's associates years ago, who's now at a sister church, um, he lost his mother and three nephews and niece to a, the fire in Sugarland. And so our hearts are breaking for that family and we're praying for them, for God's healing and strength, and we're praying for you. And so let's pray together and let's just lift our whole community up because during the middle of all this, um, God wants to show his love to every single person, so let's pray. Dear God, we come before you today and on this Ash Wednesday that's so different this year, we thank you that you wanna do something different in our hearts and lives. And so we just ask you to meet us right where we are. We pray for everyone in our church. We know so many are hurting right now, going through difficulties. Just let them know that you're right there to see them through. And then Lord, we pray for those who are hurting that have lost loved ones. And we pray for those, Lord, that um, have lost their homes, that you would just let them know that you're gonna see them through. Give them the peace that passes understanding as only you can. For it's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Hey, Ash Wednesday is important. And we really feel like our Ash Wednesday service is something every year that's very important. That's why we're here, um, even with all the winter storm that's going on. It marks a spiritual journey um, that many refer to as the journey of Lent. Lent is that 40-day period between Easter and um, uh, between now and Easter, except for Sundays. You don't count Sundays. And the season is called Lent just because it comes from an old English word for spring. And those 40 days are really a time of preparation. Uh, a lot of people, when they talk about Lent, from some traditions, talk about, you know, what they're giving up. And I'm giving up chocolate for Lent, or I'm going to go on a diet for Lent, or, you know, I'm doing this or that for Lent. But, but really, it's more for what you're gaining. You're gaining that preparation for Easter to prepare your heart for the resurrection. When we were told last week that the big storm was coming and that it get, get down into single digits, on the thermometer, uh, we tried to prepare a little bit, but I have to admit, I didn't prepare very much. I was going out there the night that it was getting really cold, just trying to throw some, um, some blankets and you know some sheets on some of my plants and trying to do a few things like that. It was almost too little too late and um, didn't really prepare like I should have. I, I don't know about you. I think when it got you know into the teens and then seven, eight, nine degrees, you know, I think that it didn't really matter what we did at that point um, because we'd never experienced anything like that. And so it was really hard to prepare for this storm. And Jesus kept telling the disciples to prepare for his resurrection over and over and over and over again. He would tell them that 
he, he would die, but then three days later, he would rise again. They didn't understand it. And when he was crucified, they just left discouraged, fearful. But then the resurrection three days later changed everything, stunned them, changed them forever. And that's what the resurrection does. And so because Christ is alive, it changes everything. He's alive, but these 40 days at Woodland Church, we wanna to use to prepare our hearts for Easter so we can experience the resurrection like never before because I believe with all my heart, praise team, I believe with all my heart that this is gonna be the greatest Easter that we've ever had. More life change than ever, more people connecting with us online and at our campuses than ever before. And Jesus is alive and we're gonna be celebrating the resurrection, but we wanna prepare our hearts I want to prepare my heart to get ready for Easter. I want it to be different in my life this year than ever before. I want Easter to come to my heart. And so we can prepare ourselves through this Lenten season. And we're going to share with you how to do that. So this can be the greatest Easter of life change in your life, in your family, and in our church that can bring revival. And that's what we've been praying for, but it all comes down to Jesus being alive. He's alive and that makes all the difference in our lives. So we're gonna start out with some worship, graves to gardens, because that's what Jesus does. You know, he turns graves into gardens. He turns beauty, he turns ashes into beauty. And so that's what this is all about, Ash Wednesday, going from ashes to beauty in the resurrection. And so we're gonna sing with all our hearts. I encourage you to sing at home. I encourage you to just stay connected because it's gonna be a real short service, but really powerful. So let's sing with our team, Graves into Gardens. Show you 
That's what he wants to do in your heart. That's what he wants to do in your life is give his beauty for ashes. You know, when we think about it, um, really ashes are a symbol of death. Just like the cross is a symbol of execution and death. Isn't that amazing that the Roman cross that was used in this horrific form of execution to instill fear into the hearts and lives of communities that the Romans had occupied, that this instrument of death would now be something we wear as a necklace or we proudly have at our churches. Why? Because that symbol of death now is a symbol of life, our life in Christ. Because he died on that cross, he gave us life. Because he died on that cross, that we have life, life to the full. And... Ashes are the same thing. Ashes are just a symbol of death. And the reason why it's Ash Wednesday is because it's a time to remember Christ's death, but it's also a time to die to ourselves, to die to our selfishness, to die to our pride, and to let him live through us. And that's why he brings beauty for ashes, uh, that he takes our ashes when we admit that's what it is that, you know, we can't do anything in and of ourselves. And we give the ashes of our broken dreams, the ashes of our broken hearts, the ashes of all of our goals. And when we give them to the Lord, then he can bring beauty out of them. It's amazing how he does that. And so I don't know what you're going through right now. Maybe you're just coming out of the ashes of failure or the ashes of uh, deep wounds and pain in a relationship or the ashes of a lost business. I, I don't know what ashes that you find yourself in today, but he can give beauty for those ashes. 
when we just trade in our ashes of all that we can do, he gives us his beauty for all that he's done for us on the cross. And he can bring something beautiful out of all the pain. I don't know what painful thing you're going through right now, but I know that, he, that God can bring beauty and he can bring something beautiful out of the ugliness and out of the hurt. There's so many things in our world today that are wrong. So many things in our world today are bad, they're not good. There's injustice, there's evil. There's so much hurt, there's sickness. But I can tell you this, God can take all of it and somehow bring beauty out of the ugliness. He wants to bring beauty into your life today. And so we're gonna sing to the Lord and we're gonna claim his promises that all the ashes in our lives, if we'll just admit that we can't do anything without his power, without his strength, we just bring all of our brokenness, we bring all of our hurt, we bring all of our despair to him, he can somehow make something beautiful out of it. And that's what Ash Wednesday's all about, is just bringing to God all that we have, all that we are, the good, bad, and the ugly, and just surrendering it all to him and saying, Lord, I surrender everything to you. It's all yours, and let him take it and make something beautiful out of it that only he can. So let's claim his promises because when he says his promises, you can count on them. When he tells you that he gives beauty for ashes, it is so. You can count on it, whether you feel it or not. It's true. And we prepare for Easter by living in his promises each and every day. So let's sing to him.
He's the maker who can make a way where there seems to be no way. 
And ashes are that symbol of death, but Ash Wednesday is so much more than that. Ash Wednesday is a symbol of life coming out of death. It kind of reminds me of several years ago when I forgot to cover the plants again when it got down to a hard freeze and all of our plants pretty much died. It was the last time it was a really hard freeze several years ago and, and we thought, oh, you know, there, there's no hope. And so I kind of cut all of them down and I was thinking I would just pull all the roots up and everything, but I waited on that and sure enough, spring came and they started springing back to life, almost every one of them. And you're gonna see that's gonna happen again on some of these plants. And you're gonna wonder how in the world uh, did they come back to life? And for you see, God can bring springtime and bring resurrection and bring life and bring newness back to the dead places in your life. He can make a way where there seems to be no way. After terrible forest fires ravaged thousands upon thousands of acres and it's devastating an amazing thing starts to happen things begin to grow back but the soil is enriched there are more nutrients there's space for things to grow some of the the broken things that were just laying around and uh, some of the things that burned were just broken up and they burn away and it leaves room for life and growth to spring forth out of the ashes. And maybe there's some places in your life that you feel like will never come back to life, but God can do that. Because Ash Wednesday is really all about life coming out of death. It's all about beauty coming out of brokenness. In all the broken areas of your life, those are the very areas that God wants to bring beauty out of. He wants to turn your worst mess into your message. He wants to take that place of your greatest pain and turn it into his purpose, his greatest purpose for your life. That's what God can do. I'm so grateful for the scripture in Isaiah chapter 61. Isaiah predicted some 800 years before the arrival of Jesus what Christ's mission and purpose would be when he came. It says, the spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all who mourn and provide for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. So how does he bring beauty out of the ashes of our lives? In Colossians 1.21, it says, once you and I were alienated from God and were enemies in our own minds because of our evil behavior, but now he has reconciled us by Christ's physical body through death to present us holy in his sight without blemish and free from accusation. Because of Christ's death on the cross, we're totally cleansed and we can stand before holy and perfect God cleansed in the blood of Christ without blemish or accusation. And so because of what Christ did on that cross, you don't have to feel guilty you don't have to have guilt anymore. All you have to do is confess your sins and you can be right with God. And really it's the great exchange. We exchange all of our guilt for all of God's grace. We exchange all of our sins for all of God's forgiveness. We exchange all of our purposelessness for the greatest purpose there is to live for Jesus Christ. What a great exchange, not because we're worthy or deserve it, but because of what he did on that cross. And sometimes I talk to Christians who say, I, I know that God's forgiven me, but I can't forgive myself. And I always say, well, who do you think you are? You think you're greater than God? God says you're forgiven once you confess your sins, not that you've earned it or deserved it, but because of what he did on the cross. And so believe it 
live in it this Lenten season and prepare your hearts by spending time with God every day, asking Him to show you the power of His resurrection through your life, to resurrect those places in your heart, in your life, in your, in your emotions that aren't what they ought to be. In Colossians 2, 13, it says, He forgave us all our sins, having canceled the written code with its regulations that was against us and that stood opposed to us. He took it away, nailing it to the cross. Therefore, do not let anyone judge you. He took away all my sins on that cross. I don't understand everything about that, but I know this. What he did on that cross 2,000 years ago gives me a clear conscience today. Gives me a reason to get up in the morning and a purpose for living and gives me heaven in my future all because of what he did. And so during this Lent, we wanna to die to our selfishness and to our flesh and all the cravings of our flesh and live to our true self. Our true self is a new creation, a heart for God, a heart to love others and a heart to build things up and build people up rather than tear them down. And so during this Lenten season, prepare your hearts by living from your true self, being who God's called you to be. But if you've never received Christ, uh, then you're not a new creation yet. You need Jesus. He offers you a free forgiveness and all you have to do is stop trying to save yourself and receive it. And I want us to stop right here. And if you've never received Christ, just pray this prayer silently to God. Right where you're at, just say, Jesus Christ, I need you to save me. I bring all my ashes of sin and guilt and I exchange them for your grace and your forgiveness. I bring all of my selfishness to you and I exchange them, Lord, for your power and purpose in heaven one day. And thank you for saving me. Come into my life through your Holy Spirit. Make me a new creation and help me live for my true self. Lead me, guide me, be my Lord from now on. And Lord, I just pray for every Christ follower who's connected with us that you would just help each and every one of us prepare our hearts for Easter. Over these next 40 days, Lord, help us spend time with you every day. Make it a priority. And then help us, Lord, be willing to do all that you call us to do, to surrender our own selfishness, to do things for others that require serving. Help us to serve others, Lord, especially those who are hurting during this time and prepare us for Easter so that we can celebrate like never before. And Lord, I pray for each and every person connected with us that's feeling broken, that you would just let them know you're gonna take those places that are broken and you're gonna bring beauty out of them. You're gonna take the very mess and work a miracle in it. You're gonna take the pain and work your purpose through it, and only you can do that. And we give everything to you. For it's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. If you pray that prayer, our pastors are connected right now online. And if you'll just click Receive Christ, they would love to know that, and you can talk with them, chat with them about that decision. Um, but right now, we're gonna give back to God some of what he's given us. We're going to give to the Lord. It's our chance to give, another chance for our regular attenders to give. And you give by just going to wc.org slash give, or you can text give WC one word to 77977. You can mail in a check, however you want to give, but give because we're making a difference through Jesus Christ. And as you give, I want you to also sing to the Lord and let's praise him and let's lift him up. This weekend, we're continuing our series relationship games that we kicked off last weekend. It's all about sorry this weekend. What is forgiveness? How do you give forgiveness? What is it really all about? Why is it so necessary? It's gonna be a powerful message this weekend. The weather's gonna be good. Don't miss it. Be here at one of our campuses. But I want us to give to the Lord. And as you give, thank the Lord for his promises. Claim his promises that are always true. You can always count on them. Let's sing to the Lord.
promises and time and time again you have proved you do just what you say and though the storms may come and the winds may blow I remain steadfast and let my heart burn when you speak Thank you. 
sing that one more time. Said I put my faith in Jesus, my anchor to the ground, my hope and firm foundation. He'll never let me down. I know it's been a hard few days, and some of us have faced hardship, homes being hurt, and just lots of uh, uh, of calamity happening. But I just believe as we put our faith in Jesus, he has never let us down. And as a team, we just simply want to encourage you to remember his track record because it's good. Lord, we trust you. In the middle of the storm, in the middle of all of this going on, we declare in this moment that God, we trust your faithfulness. It'll never run out. It's our hope and firm foundation. And it will never let us down. It will never let us down. Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. God bless our team. Amen. He will never let you down. Whatever you go through, he's going through it with you. And as a church family, we're in it with you. We're together in this. And God has a purpose and God has a plan. And no problem you're facing can stop God's plan for your life. Sometimes we ask ourselves, why is it so hard though? That's because the stakes are so high. Don't you understand that there's so many all around us that need Jesus desperately and eternal destinies are at stake. And during these next 40 days, as we prepare for the greatest day in the history of the world to celebrate the resurrection, so many thousands upon thousands of eternal destinies are at stake. So start praying for your friends, your neighbors right now. And think of who you can invite to Easter. And don't even wait for Easter. Invite them next week. Who you can invite so that they can find Jesus. Don't keep him to yourself. Uh, let's just let Jesus Christ spread because that's the super spreader that we want. Jesus Christ. You know, and... and we want to make sure that we get his name out. We lift him up because we want everyone to know our Jesus. We want everyone to know our Savior because he's alive. And because he's alive, he makes all the difference in our lives. Hey, happy Ash Wednesday. We love you. God bless you. I'm so proud of our team. Stay safe. If you need anything, please let us know. Our church family is here. We're here for you. We love you. God bless you, Woodland Church. Have a great rest of the week. Be here this weekend.